The internet changed the world, so much so that the youth who have organized this TEDx event and many of you can't even imagine a world without the connective tissue of the internet. What if I told you that right now, billions of dollars are being invested to develop the next world-changing technology? And that's blockchain. Blockchain is a once-in-a-generation idea that was first introduced as the technology underlying Bitcoin. Since Bitcoin was released in 2008, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin have really occupied the headlines and the spotlight. But it's actually blockchain technology that stands to change the world. So let's pause for a second. If you're thinking, blockchain, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, this is way too technical. I'm never going to understand the rest of this talk. Do I have a good enough signal to Instagram right now? <laughs> Bear with me and let me reassure you with a couple of key points, OK? First of all, I'm not a computer scientist. Right? I'm a lawyer, and I'm obsessed with blockchain. I promise you don't need a technological background to understand how this technology can change the world. And second, we use technology every day, and we literally have no idea how it works. Right? Most people can't really define the internet or explain how it works, but we're dependent on it. Some of us are addicted to using it. So I invite you to take a deep breath, Believe in yourself, believe in your ability to understand blockchain, and think about and focus more on what it can do rather than what it really is. We rely on intermediaries to create trust to do a lot of the things we do in the world. So for example, when you want to go buy something online, you don't have to trust or even know the seller because we trust Amazon. They vet the sellers and they aggregate the reviews and it gives us confidence in that purchase. We also know that if something goes wrong, Amazon's going to take care of it for us. They'll help us return it, and they'll help us get our money back. Same thing is true for ride-sharing apps. We feel comfortable getting into the car with a complete stranger, right? Stranger danger, because we trust that Uber has run a background check, and we can see how many stars that driver has from all of its other rides. We also don't have to share a lot of personal information with that driver. We share it with Uber. We trust that Uber is going to protect that. Banks provide the same intermediary function. When I swipe my credit card to pay for something, my bank verifies that I have the funds and ultimately sends the money. No one has to trust me because they trust my bank. Now, in exchange for providing this layer of trust, we're willing to pay a premium in service fees and also share a lot of our personal information with these intermediaries. And that system is so good and so useful because we want two-day shipping. We want quick rides. I want to be able to swipe my credit card. But it also comes at a cost. And we've seen the damage of data breaches and the misuse of our personal information from these central intermediaries. Now, this is where blockchain comes in and totally changes the world. Blockchain solves the trust problem and disrupts the notion that you need a central intermediary to transact with a stranger. So let's really slow this down, because this is the big shift. This is the transforming nature of blockchain. Right now, millions of people around the world are paying each other in Bitcoin, and there's no bank to facilitate that transaction, and there's no government to back that currency. There is no Bitcoin corporation taking fees from all of those transactions. There is only the blockchain technology, really incredible computer code controlling that system. Rather than having one person in the middle collecting all the information we need to transact and trust that we're transacting with people we should be trusting, blockchain decentralizes the record keeping. On a blockchain system, rather than one copy of the record that creates trust, everyone gets a copy. So rather than centralized trust, blockchain decentralizes trust and gives everyone the opportunity to participate in validating and verifying transactions. Now, when you take out the middleman, transactions and everything speeds up. It's a lot faster. There are fewer steps. It's also cheaper because there are fewer service fees. It's more transparent because we all have a copy of the record. And it's a lot more secure because the security protocols that blockchain uses are much more advanced than what we're using in the market today. So, I've just made a lot of really incredible claims about the power of blockchain. And speaking of trust, you have no reason to trust me. 
right? I'm a lawyer. I'm a corporate lawyer. I get it. I get it completely. So in the spirit of creating trust and without a blockchain to help us establish it, here are some third parties to help back me up. Jenny Rometty, who's the CEO and president of IBM, says that what the internet did for communications, blockchain will do for trusted transactions. And in a 2019 Deloitte survey of business executives from around the world, they found that 53%, over half, say that blockchain will be a critical priority for their company over the next 12 months. That's up 10% from the same survey in 2018. So, how is blockchain changing the world? Let's take a closer look at a couple of examples. The World Food Project is using blockchain to get aid to refugees. Right now, the WFP, which is an affiliate of the UN, is using blockchain to more efficiently get money to refugees who need it to buy food. In 2018, the WFP sent about $1.7 billion of cash to refugees, and before blockchain, relied on local financial institutions, local banks, to help facilitate that transfer of money. But they found that these local banks are unreliable sometimes, untrustworthy sometimes, and in some cases, the refugees couldn't legally access a bank account. So they've developed a blockchain solution for this problem. It's called Building Blocks. And right now, over 100,000 refugees are getting direct access to the aid they need using a blockchain, bypassing the financial intermediary. This is huge, right? It's much faster, it's much cheaper, and it takes the corruption out of that process. The WFP is so pumped about this example that they're trying to figure out ways to roll this out all over the world. Blockchain is helping neighbors share solar energy. The Brooklyn Microgrid is a blockchain project that allows neighbors to bypass their utility company and sell each other energy that they've generated on their own solar panels. Using blockchain, these neighbors, they may or, not know, may or may not know each other, are creating a marketplace for energy that they've generated. They don't have a central intermediary. The blockchain alone is what's allowing the facilitation of, that ener facilitation of transferring that energy and the payments alongside. Can you imagine a world where you didn't have to get that bill from your utility company? This is huge, right? A lot of people are paying attention. And so this kind of pilot with energy use is popping up all over the world. These are just two of many examples of how blockchain is changing the world. Because of its transparency, Blockchain is being used to track the food supply chain and has decreased the time it takes to find the source of a foodborne illness from about seven days to two seconds. By sidestepping intermediaries like banks, women around the world are gaining access to global commerce in countries where they're not allowed to have a bank account or have financial independence. By replacing record companies and streaming services, Blockchain is helping artists and musicians get compensated appropriately for the use of their art and their music. Blockchain is helping consumers make sure that they're not buying conflict diamonds or conflict minerals. And it's even being tested in countries, and even in West Virginia, as a potential means for voting in elections. So, let's be clear. Blockchain is not the answer to all of our problems. It will not solve every issue that we've got in front of us. And we've got a long way to go. A lot of technological advances and regulatory certainty are needed before we really know the full potential of blockchain. But for some context, the internet we know today, at about the same age that blockchain is right now, Amazon was still a, an online bookstore. And we were using dial-up, right? <laughs> blockchain is a baby innovation right now, and it's got a lot, of, a lot of advances to make. But here's the thing. Now you know. I've told you about it. You have no excuse to sit on the sidelines. Get curious about blockchain. Get interested in a blockchain project. Come up with an idea. Find a developer and make it happen. You have the power to blockchain the world.